Hey there, Storm fans. It's Brian Cook, and tonight, once again, we are playing One Land Lotus Combo. Say that five times fast. I've played this deck a few times here on this channel. The big idea behind this deck is recross the paths, because when you only play one land, it finds your land or it stacks your library, which makes winning with cards like Ideas and Bound super easy. In today's video, we're playing one cool cat. I'm talking about Kahira the Orphan Guard. It says that you can only use this as your companion as long as you only have these creature types in your deck. Well, we actually don't have any creatures in our deck, so we're allowed to play Kahira. And what Kahira does for us is it allows us to pay three mana and put a green card to our hand for a four. I guess you can't see that hand. Whoops, there we go. Four sideboard copies of Force of Vigor. So I've learned something from playing all the Neoform decks recently, and that's that modern is really fast at the moment and effects like echoing truth and eye of nowhere are a little bit too slow to be effective in my opinion so i'm looking more at force of vigor to answer hate permanence or even slaughter pact and i'm playing slaughter pact over echoing truth today because you can just put it on the top of your deck with recross the pad so you're getting a pseudo doomsday and then drawing this answer to a hate creature like a meddling mage or a thalia whatever you've got to do and slaughter pact is a clean win so you have Force of Vigor for Artifacts and Enchantments, Slaughter Pack for Creatures, Pack to Negation for Counterspell, same thing with Veil of Summer. And then for Discard, you have Veil of Summer once again, and these Leolina of Sanctities. So that's the sideboard. Let's say you've never even seen this deck before, and I'm just rambling about things you don't care about. So the idea is we have one land, but Lotus Field says that we have to sacrifice two lands when it enters. But we have a bunch of effects like Turn Timber Symbiosis, sea, uh, Seagate Restoration, Slundy Vision, Velcut Awakening, Belgad Recovery. These are all multimodal face cards, MF, whatever. Um, but basically, they're flip lands. And you play them, so effects like Abundant Harvest or Recross the Paths always find your Lotus Field, which is really, really convenient. You also have two copies of Sylvan Scrying, but honestly, this is the worst card in the deck, and we'd prefer not to play it. But for now, we have all these flip lands and then the Lotus Field. Once the Lotus Field is in play, you can use Ideas Unbound and Peer Through Depths alongside Psychic Puppetry to cast Ideas Unbound. You splice Psychic Puppetry onto it for three mana, and then you untap your Lotus Field. So that way you get to draw three cards and untap your land, so it's effectively a free spell. Same thing with Peer Through Depths, and then you even have a Reach Through Mist, which can make a mana with Lotus Field, but you only get to draw one random card. So you cast a whole bunch of spells, and eventually you cast a Lethal Grape Shot. That's how this deck works. That's what we're doing here today, and um, that's all I've got for now. So if you have any questions, put those down below. For now, I'm going to hop on in and just play some Modern. I hope to see you in the first round. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for some Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, 
online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. All right, time for the first match. Let's reveal our Kahira. I see they still haven't fixed the window issue with Magic Online. All right, we've actually opened up our singleton copy of Lotus Field. That's pretty convenient. Um, I think we likely try this. Okay, opponent, what have you got? Stomping Ground. Ragavan. Okay. Draw. Bobbles me, sure thing. Draw. Ideas. Okay. I'm just going to play a Balagid Recovery here past the turn. We only have a single win condition in our deck, so keep in mind if Ragavan hits our Grape Shot, I'll probably cry myself to sleep, but it's just something we've got to deal with. Ragavan gets in. Fear through depths. All right, so we are facing Classic Jund. All right, I'm just going to play this. And do I want to cycle the reach now? I don't think I do. I'm just going to pass. And we would like to find a Psychic Puppetry. Roxa. Okay. Get rid of one of these Valakuts. Actually, let's get rid of a Seagate. Plenty of cards to discard to Croxa that don't make me lose three life in this deck. Ren and six, you got it. Ouch. Pinging me immediately with the Ren. They're going aggro. We'll take five down to 12 life. And they flipped a Solundi Vision. All right, they have one card left in hand. Draw. We hit the pop. We can actually try to win this turn. So this is actually pretty cool in my opinion. So we have the Manamorphose, which allows me to filter green mana here into blue mana. So let's do that. Blue, blue. And now I can splice this. Untap. Yes. Tap this for mana. We're going to Ideas Unbound, Splice Psychic Puppetry. Yes, untap. Here through Depths, Splice Psychic Puppetry. And we'll take another Peer Through Depths. Any order. Yes, untap. Tap this for three blue. Let's Peer again. All right. Ideas Unbound, welcome. Any order, untap. God, I love this deck. So much fun. Untap. I O. Okay. So we're going to splice this and we're going to make a mana here. Yes. So now we can cast, uh, recross the paths and then just stack our deck into a win. Storm is seven. I'm not even sure if I need to do that though. Like, I don't, like, do I want to show them recrods? I'm unsure. The storm's eight. Add for triple green. Let's just do it. I want to make sure that I don't fizzle. Recrawls. So now we put the top card as turn timber symbiosis. Everybody always yells at me in the comments about how I don't do that enough. A lot of the times it just doesn't matter. Okay. Select some more arcane spells and then past in flames. Couple twiddles here and there. Love to twiddle. All right, this looks fine to me. Any order. R Riveteer's Charm. Sacrifices a creature, exiles, target player's graveyard. Okay, we don't care about that. This can go on the bottom. Okay, so now we will untap. Yes. Untap this. Let's Manamorphose. 
red green pier um i'm actually gonna veil cut I, I stacked it wrong i should have put ideas on top so i'm just gonna cast this now okay we're gonna put some cards on the bottom here all right so i'll draw four look at that all right psychic puppetry how can you not be romantic about twiddle storm Extra is so beautiful. Term 15. Okay. It's really tough to interact with outside of effects like Alpine Moon or Blood Moon. Those, if you really ever wanted to beat this deck, that's how you do it. Uh, I think I messed up my splays here, but let's find out. I did not. All right, so Storm 17. Let's entwine this. We're going to tap their treasure and untap. All right, so they've got nothing going on. And Grape Shot. Hi, oh, game number one over Boomer Jund. All right. Get out of here. Game two coming up. So we're definitely interested in Veil of Summer. Same thing with these Ley Lines. And I think you, you're pretty much like priced into boarding in like one Force of Vigor. Previously, when we had a Bounce Spell, you would always board in the Bounce Spell, but now with the Force of, without a Bounce Spell, like Force of Vigor kind of just like takes that slot. Sylvan Scrying is usually the first card out. I do think that it's sort of a, a not required card in this deck. After that, you can easily board out two Manamorphos. That brings you down to 63. You can shave on one copy of Psychic Puppetry because you really only ever want one. Now you're at 62, and the, the cuts get a little bit more difficult. Um, yeah, so now I'm at a point where these cuts really are tough. I wonder if you're just supposed to shave like one of each twiddle effect. Or do you just like board out two reach because it's not a card that that's that's like super good. Uh, let's try two reach. I've never done this before, but let's try it out. All right. Reveal our Kahira, the orphan guard cat beast thing. And we've opened up ley line. We have abundant harvest. We don't have a green source, though. Uh, I'm going to risk this hand and just assume that we'll draw a green source. I think it's worth keeping. The upside is here. Okay. Turn one land, bobble. Targets themselves. Green source. Nope. All right. Land, pass the turn. Blood Crypt and their passing draw. Ding dong, green source, pass the turn. So now next turn we can get Abundant Harvest. And if we draw, I mean, this would be, have to be a very lucky draw, but if we were to draw Psychic Puppetry, we could try to win the game. Lily. All right, Veil of Summer down. We don't need that. Draw. Wow, running hot tonight. Abundant Harvest will say land. Tap this for a blue, play Lotus Field, untap. I'm sorry, sacrifice, sacrifice. Twiddle and we'll untap here, yes. Tap for triple blue. We're gonna splice this Psychic Puppetry. And we hit another Ideas inbound, that's pretty fortunate. Okay. Ideas again. And our opponent just conceded the game! Get out of here. Total Storm, way too powerful. Turn threes with ley lines and all sorts of crazy stuff. I hope you enjoyed the first one. Four left to go. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, 
you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. All right, match two, we're on the play. Kahira. Okay, so we have a one land red hand. But if I draw land two, we have Metamorphose into Scrying for Lotus. The problem is, do we hit land two? On the play, I think this hand is a mulligan. I would definitely keep this on the draw, I think, but we have to ship this. Okay, so we have two lands and access to Lotus via Sylvan Scrying. I think we try this. All right, keep. Let's bottom the Balligan Recovery. We have the Seagate Restoration as well. All right, play this, pass the turn. And I'll pop out Kahira. That way we can look at her beautiful face while we uh, win this round, because we're going to win. Scalding Tarn. Steam Vents. The old monkey. You got it. Draw. They're going to bobble me, I guess. That's fine. Draw. Abundant Harvest. So this just finds Lotus as well. But I have the Sylvan Scrying. That would literally be a dead card. So we're going to use the Scrying instead. And I can just convert this Abundant Harvest to a random card off the top later. We'll grab the Lotus Field and pass. All right, so they're going to draw a card off Bobble. Atawara, the Soaring City. Ragavan will get in, will fall to 15 life, triggers. Turn Timber Symbiosis. What a great real reveal to Ragavan. Ledger Shredder, okay. Let's see if we can hit the uh, Psychic Puppetry here. If we do, we can go for it. Non-land. Another Twiddle. We could, in theory, go for it here. I don't know if I love that, though. Opponent's tapped out. Hmm. The problem is if you fizzle, you're just super far behind. That said, I do have a window right now. Let's try resolving Twiddle. Our opponent gets to connive with Ledger Shredder. They discard a second copy of Ragavan. One way of abu abusing the legendary rule. And Ideas Inbound. We did not hit. That's pretty scary. Twiddle. Yes. All right, let's make some mana, untap. Let's tap this and Abundant Harvest. Non-land. Uh, I don't love that. I'm going to hard cast the Slendy Vision. What do we have here? I found Psychic Puppetry, but I think it's a little bit late. So something I could do is take the recross the paths and stack my deck. So I'm wondering if there's a line that I can take where I put an ideas on top and then we draw into, we'd have one blue floating. So it'd have to be twiddle plus puppetry in an untap effect. But if our opponent has a counter spell, I'm just dead. Alternatively, I could take Psychic Puppetry right now, twiddle, untap this, draw a random card, and then I have random card plus Lundy Vision to win the game, which I feel like is pretty unlikely to win. So let's take Recross the Paths, and I'm going to untap here. Tap this for three green, Recross. Okay. So... We'll start on turn timber, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to have to discard this anyway. And then we want ideas inbound. 
And then ideas and bound, psychic puppetry, and a twiddle. And then ideas into a bunch of peers. Okay. Then reach through mist, reach through mist, reach through mist, past in flames. On more twiddle effects, grape shot, and then the rest can just be random. All right, so that can go on the bottom. And unfortunately, I have to discard my hand here. Okay. Oh no, I forgot about the Ragavan. Oh my. I guess I did put another ideas on top. That was a mistake. Ah, I forgot about Ragavan. What a dummy. What a grade A dummy. I believe I can still go for it here. It's just not going to be as easy. Womp womp. All right, they had it. We're dead. Ah, that's a bummer. Okay. So we're definitely interested in Pact Negation here. And Veil of Summer. So six cards coming in. Uh, once again, I think that you could take out Sylvan Scrying. Four cards. One Psychic Puppetry. Two Manamorphose. And now you need one more card to go out. I'm going to try to reach through Mist. Let's do it up. So even if I didn't mess that up, our opponent had Spell Pierce, so ultimately it didn't matter, but I shouldn't have done that. I should have been able to play around Ragavan. Okay, so we have Greenland. We have no access to Lotus Field. I think we have to Mulligan. Double Greenland and Blue Lands. Um, this hand's not that good. I don't think I can win this game if I go to five, so I'm just gonna try this. Pass. Misty Rainforest, and they're just passing the turn. Okay. Let's play another Balagat. I might be able to use this Lundy Vision to help dig for action, so I don't think I wanna play this as a land, especially when I have the Seagate Restoration. All right, so they picked up a steam vents. Two mana. Shredder. Bobble. They discard a lightning bolt. Draw. Okay. We pick up a reach through mists. I'm going to play this untapped going to 17, and we're going to hardcast Lundy Vision, looking for an abundant harvest to go get our Lotus Field. And there is an abundant harvest. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent is at 17. Channeler. Ragavan. Discards Lightning Bolt. So Shredder's going to get in for three. We'll fall the 14 life here. Draw. Let's try it. Abundant Harvest. Land. Hmm. I think I'm going to wait a turn. I could go for it right now. But I'd have to hit off Reach and or and or Manamorphose. All right, so let's float a blue, play Lotus Field. I mean, realistically, this Veil of Summer is probably going to be cast this turn. Like our opponent likely has some sort of an in, um, interaction. I think I'm just gonna pass. I think it's too risky. I'm going to wait. The downside of possibly waiting 
is that we don't have an answer if our opponent plays a red enchantment. So that's what I'm worried about here. Opponent attacks for six damage, we're at eight. Ragavan hits a reach. And they're passing. Four cards in hand. Okay. Let's attempt to twiddle. They're going to let me untap. Attempt to twiddle. They get to shred with their ledger shredder. All right, so let's tap this for triple green. And I'm going to attempt to reach through mist here. Ooh, recross was a very good draw. Wow. Okay. Um, and I can use Manamorphos to get into the pile. That was a very good draw. Okay. So turn timber on top. And then ideas, 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 and ideas. And then peers. Okay. Cast in flames. Grape shot. I don't know if the rest really matters. Let's just put some twiddles in there just for, you know, safekeeping or something like that. All right. Any order. Spell pierce is their top card. We'll put this on top. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> I can't get out of my own way. I can't get out of my own way. Did I really just do that? Okay, so... I think I have to try to get my opponent to counter something into Veil. Metamorphose, please try to counter this. I'm dead, because I'm a... Oh, no! Um... Okay, theoretically, I had a window here. What I could have done was cast Recross again and then Manamorphose into it. So even though I messed up, I, I had an opportunity to still win this. And now our opponent's going to hit an Ideas, but I mean, I'd be dead anyway. Um, let's see if this Veil of Summer resolves. And they had a Counterspell. I needed them to counter the Manamorphose. Um, yeah, I, I punted this. What am I doing? I don't even know. This match is on me. No excuses. I played so poorly. Uh, I'm really disappointed. I'm going to focus on playing better moving forward. Hopefully you don't have to watch this garbage again. Round three coming up. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot everyone's favorite Stormwind condition, a Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, four treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live, Eve Progenitor Ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice, we've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right, match number three. I will play better this time. Here we've opened up Abundant Harvest to find our Lotus Field, but... Our land is a blue land, so do we risk it on the draw, or do we just mulligan? I think I'm going to maul. This hand just doesn't have enough going on for it. Uh, once again, we have three blue lands, and then a button harvest. I'm actually going to keep this. Three lands at least means I don't get thought season and lose my only mana source. 
Creep shot on the bottom and let's go. Misty Rainforest. Passing the turn. Is that a Greenland? What? Crazy. They pick up a Ketria Triome. Misty Rainforest. Okay, draw. Abundant Harvest. Land. Okay. Um. No, I'm not going to pay three life. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent picks up a steam vents. What are you playing over there? Should I be expecting a Teferi? Obviously not. No white source. They're just on rug control cards by the looks of it. All right. So I'm not going to play Lotus Field yet. I'm just going to pass. On their end step, I'm going to cast this Lundy Vision. And then maybe untap and recross the paths. Ooh. You're the... What is it called? Um, Glimpse of Tomorrow deck? I just wasn't expecting that. Oh, your actual Rhinos. Okay. Let's attempt a Slendy Vision. I want to see if they force this. It's going to be tough for us to beat a force after they just put 8 power on the board. Pick up a puppetry. Alright. So we know that they put 1 force and negation on the bottom, but they still have 3 more in their deck. Okay. So they're tapped out. They're giving us a chance to potentially win the game here. So we'll take eight. They have lethal on board. We have to go for it right now. Another recross. Play Lotus Field. Sacrifice these. Reach through mists and psychic puppetry to untap our Lotus Field. Ooh, twiddle. Let's float blue. Untap. Mm -hmm. Got this for green because I want to be able to manamorphose. Cast recross the paths. If they have a force, I'm probably just dead, but I got to take my shot. Okay. And after that last debacle with putting Turn Timber on top, I'm not going to worry about it. That card doesn't mean anything to me. I'm going to play around me being a screw up and not putting it on top of my deck. Okay. Peer through depths. Reach through mists. Grape shop. Cast in flames. Let's select some foil. To oh, I accidentally selected a turn timber. How dare you shift on me? Okay. Now dreams grip. And then we can just do any order. All right, put this back on top. I guess the uh, downside is our opponent knows what I'm about to draw into. All right, Manamorphose. And they decide to force a will that, or force a negation that. Okay, um, I'm actually just dead here. They have lethal on board. I'm out of things to do with my mana, so boss game number one. Doesn't feel good. Okay. Right side, we do get to board in these force and negations in Vale of Summers. Our opponent's deck is known to play Blood Moon, so I think we should probably bring in two copies of Force of Vigor. That brings us up to 68, though. It's crazy. I think you're supposed to board out Past and Flames versus the 4X Endurance deck. I know, but I just don't think we actually want this in our deck at any point. Board out these Sylvan Scryings. Board out two copies of Manamorphose. That brings you down to 62. We already took out a Puppetry. 
At least one reach, maybe two. Is there anything else I'd rather have? I don't think so. Reach through miss number two out. Let's go. On the play. Okay, here, uh... Sure, let's keep. Play the turn timber. Yes. Abundant harvest. Land. Go get that lotus field. Pass. Okay, scalding turn. Draw. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to play this instead. I was going to play this Lundy Vision because then I could untap my land next turn with a twiddle, but it doesn't look like we have the action spells for that anyway. They pick up a basic island. They might have a Blood Moon in hand. Basic Forest. Draw. Let's harvest again. Non-land. Play the field. Alright, pass the turn. If our opponent does have Blood Moon, I can pack to negation it and then upkeep pay for it by using Twiddle on tapping the Lotus Field. But I really don't want to have to do that. Okay, and they're passing the turn. Draw. Um, no arcane spells here. Something I could do is go twiddle twiddle Salundi vision. Um, but the problem is if it misses, I think I'm just going to pass. I can Salundi vision on the run step. Okay, here come some rhinos. So there's one blood moon. Two blood moons. They bordered in Force of Vigor. There's no targets for that. Okay. I wonder if I should play this Lundy Vision now. So that way it can't get hit by Mystical Dispute. And it resolves looking at... All right, I think we just have to take a peer through depths here. Okay. Land number four. They're at 14. Shardless agent. You've got some rhinos. Go, go, rhino power. We'll take eight. We're at nine life. All right, time to get going. Recross the paths. Hmm. I don't know if we want to use that or not yet, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Untap. So my problem is I don't want to have to stack five random cards on top before recross. I don't trust myself to do that the correct way. So I'm going to just do this first. Pay with the green. Attempt a Veil of Summer. Okay, and now I have my cantrip to get into the recross pile. Here. Um, I don't think any of these really matter. Let's take another Veil of Summer. Okay, so now I can play the recross. I believe we actually have this one. As long as I don't mess it up, we should have this. It's a big if, but I believe in me. I can do it. Okay. We need to get up to storm 14. Let's put some twiddles in there. Some Valakut Awakenings. All right. Any order. 
keep this on top. Okay, our spell is finally resolved and reach through mists. Okay. Untap. Tap for three blue. Ideas unbound. Let's untap this lotus field. Yes. Is that a common deer? I thought I saw common deer in there. I think they're just fire ices. Sorry, I was like, wow, I can't believe our opponent's playing common deer. But uh, it's not. I'm just old and know too many magic artworks. Okay, so at this point we just have to keep on casting spells. Yes. Ideas inbound, untap. All right. Untap. Untap. And one more for good measure. Grape shot. We have no copy of uh, Passing Flames to get this back if we needed to. That said, we do have a Pact Negation and Balaged Recovery, so we can actually just Balaged Recovery back the Grape Shot. All right, game three coming right up. I don't think we need to change anything. I'm just going to resubmit this. Okay, game three. Kahir has been revealed. We have green source plus abundant harvest. This hand's great. I'm going to keep. Okay. Draw. Whittle. They pick up a triome. All right, they're just passing the turn. Draw. We're in my draw step. They're stopped. Let's attempt to resolve this Abundant Harvest. If it gets countered, we have another Abundant Harvest ready to go. We'll say land. I'm going to play another turn timber here. Ouch. Abundant Harvest. Non-land. Okay, so we have a whole lot of twiddles here. Okay. And they're just passing. So they missed land three. This was good. I'm going to cast this Manamorphose to see what I can draw into. If I hit the... Um, Psychic Puppetry, I might be interested in trying to win this turn. Blue, blue. Veil of Summer. Okay. I feel like it's pretty risky for me to go here. I'm afraid of Blood Moon, though. Alright, let's try this. I'm going to go for it. They're going to force. I'm going to attempt another twiddle. And they force again. I think this is a win. If they're willing to force twiddles like that, we take that. So, pass the turn. We can always try again later. They have three cards in hand. They hit land three. I should have known that they didn't have Blood Moon because they fetched uh, a Steam Vents on the second one. One has three cards. There's the puppetry. Okay. So if I dream script here, I can't tap Veil of Summer for green, green, green. Because then I don't have triple blue for the ideas. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to try splicing and see what happens here with the ideas in mound. One has three cards. If they have a third counter, you got it. Okay, so that resolved. Let's dream script, untap. Okay, so I can play an untap land here. Question is if I want to. 
So we have five total mana at the moment. I can go up to six and I can play Turn Timber into Valakut Awakening, but then I have no mana floating. All right, I think I want this for Veil of Summer anyway. So I'm gonna play this out. Tap for red and I'm going to Valakut Awakening. Actually, is that the right move? Recross doesn't actually do anything for me. Okay, let's try it out. Come on, try to counter this. Okay. Put these on the bottom and I'll draw four. I think I'm pressured into keeping the uh, Veil of Summer back. All right, and I can cast this Splicing. Force of Vigor is not what I needed. Um... So I have four mana, six mana. I can cast Seagate, but I'm gonna have to pass the turn. All right, Twiddle. Yes. So that's six mana, and I now have to burn the Psychic Puppetry. Yes. Cast Seagate Restoration. It's not going to be that good. It's going to be plus four cards, assuming that it resolves. All right, now I have to discard three. And I don't have a Psychic Puppetry anymore. Okay, Wooded Foothills. I imagine they're going to play a Cascade spell here. Um, and then untap and try to Blood Moon me, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Footfalls. I'm going to discard these. I, I can't afford to keep the Force of Vigor on. Like, if they Blood Moon me, they got me. Then I think we discard one Pact. All right. So they have eight damage on the board. I would go to six. My best draw is another Psychic Puppetry. They suspend crashing footfalls. Why did you fetch force if you didn't have the blood moon in hand? Okay. I guess maybe in case they drew the blood moon, but the game would have already been over. Draw. I'm just going to counter this. I'm dead if I pass the turn anyway, so... That mana means more to me than having this in hand. They have one card, so they can't force it. Draw. Up a tree? I'll take it. It's better than a dead draw. Alright. Let's cast ideas. Okay. Untap. I just have two ideas again. So I need puppetry and a twiddle effect. And I bricked. Okay, so we're dead. A little bit of a bummer. One and two. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm. But that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. All right. Last few matches haven't been the greatest. I'd like to correct that. We're going to try to get match number four. On the play, reveal our Kahira. This hand would be great if we had access to Lotus Field. I think I'm going to try it. So one of the reasons I'm willing to try this is that we have two lands between the Valica Awakening and the Valica Recovery. On turn three, assuming that we don't find it already, I can play Manamorphose for blue and then cast Peer looking for Abundant Harvest. And you always want to play your Valica uh, first because if you draw into Abundant Harvest, you want to be able to cast it. It looks like we're facing Hammer Time. Black mana. 
Main deck Thoughtseize. Okay. And they took the Manamorphose. Okay. Abundant Harvest off the top rope. Let's see it. Draw. So close. It's a, it's a little bit like Abundant Harvest. They both cost one mana. You can't deny that. All right. Pass the turn. There's a Saga. Esper Sentinel. And they're getting in for one. I'll fall the 19. Ouch. They're passing with two available mana up. Kind of surprising. Draw. Womp, womp. The thought sees on Mana Morphos definitely hurt there. All right, they still have three cards. Okay, we'll take two down to 17. If they don't do anything this turn, they can make huge constructs with Urza Saga, so we do have to consider that. All right, so this puts me to 14. I'm just going to pass here. So they can make a 4-4 four, four on my, uh, my end step, untap, make a 5-5, five, five, search their library for... Um, Maybe I should have done this on my main phase. That might have been a mistake. I was like, I want to keep it up in case I need to twiddle something. But I guess if I'm digging for Abundant Harvest or Sylvan, I want those lands to be untapped. Maybe I just punted. I hope it doesn't matter. Uh, but our point is eight damage on the board right now. Okay, so this is only nine. Okay, so I'm at five, they're at 23. Let's cast this peer. And I'll pay the one, you don't deserve a card. Okay. We found scrying, that's gonna have to do. Let's go. Draw. Okay, so we can still do this. I'm not out of this by any means. No. And that play ended up not mattering because I couldn't cast Sylvan Scrying the same turn anyway. All right, so now we play the Lotus Field. Sacrifice these two tap lands. Tap, untap the Lotus Field. Yes. And let's ideas inbound. Untap. Storm three. So can we have a recross here? So I think we can create a recross the pile and just win the game. All right, tap for three green. Let's cast this. You dead. Okay. Here. Peer. Reach. Okay, select more of those. We'll put a grape shot in the middle there, along with the past in flames. Select a few more twiddle effects. Why not? Just for good measure. More twiddles. Why not? We'll grab a few copies of Manamorphose. And that looks good to me. Any order. Keep this on top. We won the Clash with a 2. Take that, Mom. Take that. Alright, so now we can splice this. Alright, so at this point in the game, I just have to cast a whole bunch of spells in a group shot. Our opponent gained a little bit of life with a Shadow Spear. So it's going to take me slightly longer to reach lethal, reach lethal storm, but I'm not worried about it. Okay. Untap. Yes. Reach through mists. Storm 10, or I'm sorry, storm 11. Reach again. 
Each reach through mist makes one mana when you splice it. Okay. Yes. Let's make some more mana. Tap this for red. Untap. Okay, tap this for green. Untap. Let's peer. I don't want to show them past in flames. Um, cancel. I don't want them to think that I have use for my graveyard, so I'm just not going to show it to them. Uh, let's take a Manamorphose, why not? Okay, it's from 17. Let's grab, I don't know, Psychic Puppetry. Manamorphose. Red, red. It's from 19. So let's cast Peer. Filter red. Seagate Restoration. Seems like a fun one. We have a whole bunch of mana floating. Let's cast it. Under the sea, gate restoration. All right. Um, set this for green mana, abundant harvest, non land, abundant harvest, non land, abundant harvest, non land, and some grape shots. Are they tasty? Okay, so we've gotten game number one over hammer time. I don't know if this is a matchup where we really want Leyline of Sanctity versus the like four Thoughtseize deck. You certainly can. I just don't know if that's really where we want to be. Uh I am interested in Force of Vigor though. So it's definitely bored in those. Um take out one puppetry. Take out these Sylvans. And a Reach. So if you really wanted to board in Leyline, you could probably board out the other three Reaches, which is pretty reasonable. It's not like Reach is that crucial for the deck. Um, but I definitely wouldn't mulligan towards this card. I do think having one Reach in your deck helps a lot for your Recross piles, so I'm not sure if that's something I'm interested in. I'm going to try out what we have here. I have bad news. I accidentally didn't reveal my Kahira when I just boarded in for uh, Force of Vigor. Here she is in my sideboard, and I accidentally clicked through the prompt. Does not feel good, man. Um, I think we keep this, though. Does not feel good. Esper Sentinel. Draw. Player Slendy Isle past the turn. We already have the Lotus Field, so Reach can help me dig for land number two, but unfortunately we'd be giving uh, the Esper Sentinel deck a card. There's Thoughtseize. Come on, take the Force of Vigor. I don't want to cast it anyway. And they do. Okay, so Girder's Aid is kind of scary. Three cards in hand. I have to try to draw land here. So we're going to give them a card. Draw. It is, in fact, a land. Play it. No, I don't want to pay three life. So my best draw next turn is a Psychic Puppetry that would, would allow me to potentially try to win the game. Sanctifier. I don't think I care about that. Okay. Draw. Slendy Vision. I'm just trying to think through this. So let's say I just play Lotus Field this turn. Next turn I can go Twiddle, Recross, Cycle Manamorphose into my pile and pick up Psychic Puppetry, but I'm a mana short of using Peer. 
All right, I think I just have to worry. Like another thing I could do here is Lotus Field, untap Lotus Field into Recroths using the Twiddle and then just put Puppetry on top and win next turn that way. I think that might be the play. All right, untap. Yes, I'm gonna pay the tax. Yes. Recross the paths. We will put the turn timber on top. Okay. And then, okay, how do I wanna do this? So we want puppetry. I can cycle the Manamorphose into ideas. So I think I do that. I hope I'm not wrong about this. Okay. Put a few copies of Reach in there. Rip, rip, rip. All right, some twiddles. We'll put some Seagates in there. Who doesn't love to draw cards? Manamorphose. Okay, this seems good to me. Pure Steel Paladin, that can go on the bottom. I actually put it in the correct place this time. Can I please get a round of applause? I would greatly appreciate that. And I'm going to pass the turn. Come on, I didn't hear you. Please clap a little bit louder. I did it correctly. I just appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay. Ink Moth Nexus. Shadow Spear. You got it. Getting in for four. I'll go to 14 and they'll go up to 18. Giver of Ruins. We know that they have a Pure Steel Paladin in hand. Okay. So we're drawing the puppetry. Um, I just realized I, I can't do the play I wanted to do. So this is actually going to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to cycle Manamorphose into Ideas Inbound. It doesn't quite work that way. I can get two of the ideas, but I can't use the third. Or I can't use three and four. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. Blue, blue. Because I'm stuck with awkward colors here, so I can peer, but I can only get one idea. In my head, I thought, I was like, oh, I'm just going to, instead of casting peer, cycle into ideas and then win that way. But that's not actually how it works. So now we're putting four really good cards on the bottom of her deck. I don't love that. All right, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult because I messed up, which, you know, welcome to the theme of this league. Um, but we should be okay. From four, yes. Whole bunch of mana there. Yes, more mana. I also know that I can recross again and restack and then cast Peer into it but I don't think I'll need to do that. Okay, let's just keep casting spells. Take a Seagate Restoration. Wait, you think I can't make seven mana? I can do this. Untap. Okay. Now we cast Seagate, draw a whole bunch of cards. Storm is nine. Look at that. Untap. Tap again. Oh, am I lagging? They've conceded. All right, I brought it back to Choo Choo, but we still have to win match number five to get my money back. I hope we do. And I'm sorry that I forgot to reveal Kahira at my sideboard. In the one matchup where I brought, it, brought in four Force of Vigor, I didn't reveal the Kahira. Maybe this cat isn't that cool. I don't know. But thank you for watching so far. One round left.
If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. All right, fifth and final round time. We're on the play. Reveal our combo cat. Okay, so we have a recross. Yeah, this hand's great. Keep. I wonder if, like, you just shouldn't reveal Kahira in game ones. That would be another thing to think about. Because, like, how often are you actually using her in game one? So what if you only revealed Kahira in game twos? That's an interesting thought. Our opponent leads on a hollowed fountain into Esper Sentinel. So maybe this is Blue Hammer. Okay, let's play another Balagad past the turn. Relic. So this is likely the cast deck, I think. I mean, Hammer has a Relic in there, too. Another Recrods, okay. Ouch. So the first one is going to uh, give them a card, and then it puts a Lotus Field onto the battlefield. But we don't get to stack our deck. Any order. Either spell bomb. So they're that deck. Um there's like an eight cast D deck. I don't think they're hammer time. Yes, hammer time could play either spell bomb and relic, but they play less numbers of them. I don't think I want this. That's gonna go on the bottom. Alright, and now Lotus Field triggers. Pass that turn. That turn, that turn, that turn. Something like that, right? Okay, so they're drawing an Aether Spell Bomb. Oh no, they, they could have scribed that to the bottom. My bad. Or clashed it to the bottom. And they did. So they have some Mem Knights. This might just be Blue Hammer. I should quit talking. Like, that's the real lesson here is Bryant, don't ever talk. Message received loud and clear from the Magic the Gathering Gods. Kronos, God of Storms, I hear you. They have a Saga, Esper Sentinel. Let's see if I can win this turn. I'm not sure if I can, but let's see what our options say. So I can play Grip Grip. That brings me up to six, eight mana. Balagad for five. Mana Morphos. Yeah, I think we got this. All right, let's untap. No. All right, tap for green. Untap. All right, now we recross the paths. No lands under deck this time. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to put an ideas on top. And then I want to put a Psychic Puppetry and then a bunch more ideas. Because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Manamorphos into Ideas Inbound, cast Ideas Inbound without Psychic Puppetry into Ideas with Psychic Puppetry plus all the other cards and then just win the game. Okay. Not using the Graveyard or Creatures makes this deck really powerful. Yes, I know that we have one past in flames, but we don't really need it. In fact, I've thought about cutting it from the deck previously, but I think it's like sort of free to just play one. But I definitely don't think this deck needs it. Okay. Selecting more cards. Okay. And the rest can just be any order. Put that on top. All right, so we're going to Morphos, and I need to make blue blue with this. Blue blue, draw three. This deck is really sweet. Imagine what you can do if you know how to not misplay like me. So if you're a better magic player than me, which is a low bar, you can 
just like play this deck beat all the graveyard hate beat all the creature hate like the only thing this deck loses to in my opinion is dedicated land hate like blood moon or alpine moon also decks that are just like hyper fast before turn three wins but there's nothing that you can do about that anyway so don't worry about it okay obviously i'm not talking about like you're not going to be like no deck that you see on this channel beats living end so if you're like your deck loses to this yeah this deck isn't oh 91 percent. i'm not trying to say that but i'm talking about like macro strategies uh i'm not trying to say that this deck beats everything i'm talking about like the style of hate permanence that people play or hate cards that people play i guess i should say i should pick my words more carefully okay because living end gives me nightmares like just i fall asleep at night crying thinking about all of the matches that i lose the living end all right storm 12 cast this pier grab a twiddle i guess Yes. Metamorphose. Blue, blue. Metamorphose. All right, twiddle. 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 Stormy teen. I guess I can just cast the group shot here. Target. Okay. That'll do, Pig. That'll do. Game number one over Hammer Time. Or Thought Cast. I don't know. It's some sort of artifact deck. Please forgive me. Eight Cast, Hammer Time. I guess we saw a Thought. Uh, what is it called? I, can't, I don't know words or things anymore. I'm too old. Thought Monitor? Is that it? I think that's it. All right, we want the Force of Vigors. We saw some blue. We might want these Pact Negations. Maybe the Veils. Is Veil better than Pact here? I guess if they don't have counters, we can use Veil the Cantrip. So that might be a little bit better. And it's a green card for Force. Let's get rid of the Sylvan Scryings. Board out two Mana Morphos. That's acceptable. I wonder if I just board out this past in flames. Against like the main deck relic deck. Board out a psychic puppetry, and then I get to keep triple reach. So is past in flames better than reach three? Or I could board in one pact over the second reach. I think I'm fine just leaving it like this. Let's board out the past in flames. Game two, I will reveal my Kahira. This cool cat has been revealed. I can finally potentially use it in the same game that I boarded in Force of Vigor. All right, so we have two lands. We have Lotus Field, keep. Okay. Let's play some Magic the Gathering. Dark Seal Citadel into Relic doesn't matter card has blank text on it um let's play a salundi i don't think i want to play out the velicut awakening because i can use the velicut awakening to fix my hand later there's a saga sure thing draw play the turn timber and I'm, i could play pier but I'm not interested. I want to wait and see if I can find a Psychic Puppetry and really get the best out of that card. Saga moves up to two. Atawara, Soaring City. They're going to pass. Another Velikid Awakening. All right, I'm going to try the Pier. I've changed my mind. Okay, so... Recross is there if I want it. 
somewhat interested in this Veil of Summer too. Hmm. All right, I think I'm actually going to take the Veil. Play the Slendy Vision, or Slendy Isle, pass the turn. So by, I made a decision when I, I'm going to turn mouse turn around, there we go. Uh, when I took the Veil that I was going to play the land, because if you play Lotus Field this turn, next turn it's really awkward with trying to make all of the correct colors, but if you just play a land here, it changes the game on that a little bit. There's a Saga. They can make another construct here. And they do. And now they search their library for an artifact that costs zero or one. If they want to represent more Counterspell, they get Springleaf Drum, and they do. All right, and now construct gets in for six. Two mana. Ooh. I need to find that Force of Vigor right away. That was backbreaking. Draw. Hey. Um, so I don't think I'm supposed to play the Lotus Field here. Because then I can't pay for like a Metallic Rebuke. I could just put the Kahira to my hand. But what, it opens me up to losing the game, and I don't want to do that. All right, so I want to see if they try to play something first. And they don't. Um, I could have done it in their upkeep, I guess. That might have been a mistake by me. Start the Damping Sphere and a Construct. Pitch Veil of Summer. Okay, Damping Sphere down. I'm at nine, opponent has four cards in hand. Memnite. They're tapping the knight to Springleaf Drum. Ingenious Smith, you got it. They play a Razor Bridge, sure thing. Still have two cards in hand. They're passing. I'm gonna cast the Slendy Vision on their end step. See if we can find something good. Take the ideas inbound. All right, it's go time. Blue, blue. Play the Lotus Field. Sacrifice these. Untap. Um, I could respond to this. So what I could do is Dream Script into Veil Cut Awakening, hoping to rip a Veil, but I don't think that's the right move because I want to resolve this ideas before I do that. So we're going to let that go. Or do I just pay? Hmm. It's effectively the same thing, right? Yeah, it just ties up my mana. All right, we're going to let it go. Untap. I would need perfects off this to win. Yeah, I'm not winning this game. Ideas inbound. Okay. Um, well, it's Morphos, I guess. Blue, red. I had to play this. I don't really have a choice. Well, have I already played a land? Oh, I guess I have played a land. I played the Lotus Field. Uh, I'm actually just dead then, unless I draw a Twiddle off this Veil of Summer. Okay, that does it. So we'll go to the next one. All right, game three. Never finding Psychic Puppetry, that game hurt. Um. Is Veil what I want? Should I just have Pax in my deck? I mean, I did pitch a Veil to the Force and uh, Vigor that game. I'm just going to resubmit and try it again. Damping Sphere. Not very kind. Reveal the cat. 
All right, so we have turn three recross, which is a little bit slow, but maybe I'll draw an abundant harvest. We have two lands. We have to find a third land to even cast the recross the pads. All right, so let's play the battle again. Pass that turn. Dark Steel Citadel. Memnite. Pass. Draw. Okay, well, that is land three. I'll take that. Memnite. Ottawara Soaring City. Damping Sphere. I'm just going to blow this up now. Get them while they're tapped out. I don't want them to be able to counter it later. Okay, they have three cards. Draw another veil. It's not the worst. Let's play our land, pass. We'll take one here. Ooh, they're just gonna hold up Metallic Rebuke. Um I think I'm just gonna put cat to hand then. The cat has entered the hand zone. First time this league, the cat beast might be unleashed. You never know. You just never know. I could play Kahira here. I could Manamorphose, make white, white, player cat, and just start the beat down. Um, they have five cards. I think I'm just going to pass. They found land three. Esper Sentinel. Draw. Seagate. All right, so yes. I'm going to cast Metamorphose. They'll get to draw a card here. So the reason that I'm doing it this way is I want to have Veil of Summer back up for my recross. This will find Lotus Field no matter what. Veil. Another Seagate. Recross the pads. Cool. Lotus Field. Do I want that? Um, I think it's kind of free because it gives me a backup Force of Vigor later. Or I could even get back the Recross, so I'll keep that on top. Our opponent revealed Thought Cast, so I am not getting back the Recross the Paths. Sacrifice these two. Okay. They're attacking for two. I'll fall to 15. I might need to pick up a fancy Kahira just for this deck. I own it in paper, but I don't own a Kahira. Why? I don't have a good excuse. I should definitely get one. The Fairy. The Time Raveler. Draw. Um, let's peer. See if I can find a Psychic Puppetry. No, peer. No Psychic Puppetry. But I did hit a Dreams Grip. So let's untap. All right, so I have five mana here, seven, nine mana. Okay, with nine mana, and I can still play this as a land, so 10 mana. I can go Balagad into Recross the Paths, which is six. Ideas, which would be eight, and then I can create a pile that wins from there. That's actually pretty sweet. Okay. Tap this for green. Untap. Yes. Y'all get recovery, getting back, recross the pads. All right, so I'm going to hurt myself here. Go to 12. Tap, tap, and recross the pads. Okay, so I, I've messed this up twice this league with the turn timber. Uh, I guess I'll try it again. Maybe I can be 
a real boy and do this the right way. So turn timber symbiosis. And then what we want to do, and it might not seem obvious, we want a psychic puppetry and a reach through mist because with only two mana, we need this combination in our deck. And then from there, we can do our standard ideas stuff. Okay, and then we'll do some more reach through mists. Why not? Peer through depths. Do a grape shot. Manamorphose. Some twiddle effects. Who doesn't love a good twiddle? I have some Japanese foil sevenths. They're beautiful. Beautiful. I have uh, some deck showcases here on this channel. If you type that into the search and you can view, look at my Japanese foil decks, I promise there's some twiddles in there. But for now, let's just keep on winning. And I'm going to be a big boy, put this on the bottom of my deck like I'm supposed to. I hope you're proud. Look at the character growth of this league already. Okay. Ideas inbound. Tap for blue. Splice. Okay. I think we've got it. Okay. From 10. Ideas. A. I mean, I put the cards there. I know that they should be there. But I can still A if I want to. All right, keep splicing or keep whatever words, things. Got to narrate my plays. Okay, so untap. Eight minutes on the clock. I don't need to rush this. Plenty of time. Okay, tons of mana floating. Let's peer from 16. I haven't quite got enough storm yet, but part of me wants to just find a Seagate and draw my deck because well i deserve it i've gone this far might as well okay and who knows maybe we'll cast kahira let's get her on the table all right running out of uh peer through depths here i gotta find that seagate are they all in my graveyard where are they um Let's take an Abundant Harvest, why not? Slendy Vision. They must all be gone. That's a bummer. All right. Uh, let's put her on the battlefield. She deserves to be on the table. You can't tell me otherwise. Untap. She's where she belongs. Manamorphose. Red green. But I did red green there. Ah, uh, there was one left. Ah, uh, now I feel like a fool. I have seven mana. Hold on, we can still do this. We can still do this. I believe in us. It's going to be for way less than it would have been before, but I can still do it. Okay, untap. And now we can cast this Seagate. Loading mana for group shot. So I can't mess it up. Alright, so I, I cast it. I mean I just didn't draw as many cards as I wanted to. And group shot. So this is for 27. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, rest of you. All right. What a way to end the league. Kahira, the last thing on the table, like our queen deserves. Look at her. Regal on the battlefield. Beautiful. All right. Let's not pretend that this 3-2 is anything better than it was. But imagine what this deck could do if you actually knew how to play magic. You know, I'm a novice, I'm a beginner, not that good. I punted and misplayed a lot in this league. Imagine what you could do if you were better. This deck is actually really good. Um, I felt a little bit awkward not having a bounce spell in a couple matchups. Like, I didn't really want to board in Force of Vigor versus uh, the blue-red deck. 
and if they had a blood moon i would have been lights out so i think maybe instead of this slaughter pact you just play an echoing truth uh that would be the one change i would recommend to this deck list otherwise i think i would just resubmit this but this was a lot of fun. I always love playing this deck. I don't think this deck gets the credit it actually deserves. It's a really powerful turn three deck and people just don't play it. Um, I don't know why. It's also super budget friendly. I understand I added Force of Vigors and some other expensive cards to the deck today, but no fetch lands. In general, this deck's pretty cheap. Take away the Force of Vigors. You can play a budget option if you need to, but the rest of the deck is just very, very affordable. That's what I've got. If you disagree with me, I don't care. It's my video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and always keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.